good evening everyone today i'm going to provide you some questions based on chapter one so the first question is what is the difference between a host and an end system what are different types of end systems and is a web server an end, end system as we have studied in the slides and in the lecture also that the host and end systems means same the device used by us like I'm using a laptop now a mobile a laptop or any machine which is on which a user is working so we have what are the different types of end systems you can say it's mobile laptop desktop so there are several types of end devices and systems yes web server are also end systems as you are requesting any information from the web server and web server is replying to that request so the request goes from one end system travels the transport layer network and then it goes to the the end system on the other side so it can be a web server or it can be another computer like r1 is second question is what are standards why are standards important for protocols so standards are important for uniformity among the different networks and products to interoperate when, when i'm saying products to interoperate means that if we will have different set of protocols with, uh, for different types of network different types of machines then suppose i'm using a windows desktop now and you start using a an Apple desktop then there will be a problem of compatibility between them so there is a provision of the machines to change that's why the protocols have some standards so you have to follow certain standards when you set up a network you use end systems so there are standard set of protocols which needs to follow next question is that consider sending a packet from a source host to a destination host or a fixed route what are delay factors in the end-to-end -end delay which of the delay are constant and which are variable if you remember that these are there are slides which are based on the different types of delays so this answer is taken from there basically so we have processing delay processing delay is the delay the time taken by the machine on which the end system is to process the packet the transmission delay is the delay when the packet is available to be sent from one point to another and then propagation delay is the time taken by to uh, by the packet to traverse the path between the host from one side to the another side and queuing delay comes only in picture when there are more packets waiting at the node from which you are sending so if there are three packets before your packet then you have to wait before those packets are processed by the node so the next question the next part of this question is which of the delay are constant and which are variable so you can see this is constant this is constant this is constant queuing delay is variable why it's variable because you don't know how many packets will be available at a particular node before your packets will be sent so there might be two packets there will not be any packets or there might be 10 20 packets or there might be a condition where the buffer is full and your packet will be sent back that there is no available buffer capacity available for you now fourth question is how long does it take a packet of length 1000 bytes to propagate over a link of distance 2500 kilometer where the propagation speed equals to 2.5 into 10 is to the power 8 milliseconds and transmission rate is equals to 2 megabits per second as we know that the complete end-to-end -end delay or the nodal delay is d processing delay plus d queuing delay plus d transmission delay and d propagation delay so the question here is asking you what is the propagation delay because it's asking you how long it does does it takes a packet of length 1000 bytes 
to propagate over a link of this much distance. So in the question, the processing delay is not given to you, queuing delay is no, not given to you. The only two things which you can calculate in the questions are transmission delay and propagation delay. The formula for uh, transmission delay is L over R, where L is the length of the packet and R is the rate supported by the link between the two points. So if we have to calculate it, then it will be 1000 bytes as the size of the packet is 1000 bytes divided by the transmission rate. So it will be 1000 bytes divided by 2 into 10 is to the power bits per second. These two units are different. It, this is bit per second and this is byte. So you need to change it into bits. So one byte is equals to 8 bits. So you need to multiply it with 8. So this thing will come out to be 4 milliseconds. Now depropagation is your distance divided by the speed. So it's 2500 kilometer divided by the speed 2.5 into 10 raised to the power 8. So you can say it will be 10 milliseconds. In this question, the person is asking how much is the propagation delay. Now so answer is, the next question is how long does it take a packet of length L to propagate over a link of distance D with a propagation speed S and transmission rate R bits per second. Does this delay depends on packet length? Does this delay depend on transmission rate? So as we did in the previous question, that's propagation time is basically equals to distance upon propagation speed. So it's D by S. So you can see that the propagation de delay doesn't depend on the length of the packet. So you can say no, this delay is propagation delay. Packet length is used for transmission delay or you can say nodal delay as a whole. The next question is, does this delay depend on transmission rate? We can say no, propagation delay does not depend effect, does not be affected by transmission rate as we are using the propagation speed only. Now next question is, suppose host A wants to send a large file to host B. The path from host A to host B has three links of rate R1 equals to 500 kbps, R2 equals to 1 million. Uh, Mbps and R3 equals to 0.5 Mbps. No traffic is present in the network except this. What is the throughput for the file transfer? Suppose the file is 4 million bytes. Divide the file size by the throughput. Roughly how long it will take to transfer the file to host B. So you can see we have a host A and host B and there are three links between them R1, R2 and R3. So if you remember, I told you earlier also that throughput is decided by the can say slowest link in the network. So out of these, you can say R1 is 500 kbps, R2 is 1 mbps, and R3 is 0.5 into 10 raised to the power 3 kbps, you can say 500 kbps. The slowest links are R1 and R3. So the minimum link, or you can say, minimum link speed in the network decides the throughput. Therefore, throughput here is equals to 500 kbps. So throughput is basically by what amount the files are received correctly on the receiver side or the destination side. Now, if we need to find the time to, uh, to transfer the file from one side to another you can say from host A to B then you can say the size of file in bits equals to 4 into 10 is to the power 6 due to millions 10 is to the power 6 bytes so you need to change it to bits 1 byte equals to 8 bits so therefore the time taken for file transfer equals to 4 into 10 is to the power 6 into 8 divided by 500 into 10 is to the power 3 or you can say it is 64 second now based on these questions, I am giving you some questions which you need to try from your side. If you are not able to solve these questions, then you can provide the information in the comment box. You all have my email address and you can send 
your queries or if you are not able to solve it then i'll come with another video in which i'll solve these questions so you have to repeat question four with a pro processing delay equals to 0.5 milliseconds and if the network has four packets in queue before your packet or you can say i introduce a processing delay and i intro introduced a queuing delay and the time taken to process service is given is equals to 0.1 millisecond so there are four packets in the queue before your packet and the time taken to process service a packet is 0.1 millisecond so you have to calculate the nodal delay or end to end delay you have to repeat the question number uh, question number 6 for link speeds equals to 1 mbps r2 equals to 2.5 mbps and r3 equals to 5000 kbps please subscribe i'll keep on sending more questions on the on the same channel and if you have any queries you can write it in the form of comments below the video and you all have my email address on which you can communicate thank you have a nice day